Hello everyone, my name is Ajinkya and I am happy to present our work called MSF, Mean Shift for Self-Supervised Learning. This is a collaboration between me, Sarush and Hamid. The goal of Self-Supervised Learning or SSL is to learn rich generalizable features on unlabeled data. First, a model is pre-trained on a large-scale unlabeled data set with a pseudo-task like in-painting, colorization or instance discrimination. Then. The model is used for a downstream task with labels like object detection or image classification. One of the important paradigms in SSL is to alternate between clustering and predicting the cluster assignments. A clustering algorithm like k-means is used to cluster the representations of the unlabeled dataset and each image is assigned to a particular cluster. Next, given an image and its assigned cluster, the model is trained to predict the correct cluster. Then you go back to the clustering step and keep alternating between these two steps. Intuitively, the model is pushing the representations of the input image towards the center of the correct cluster while pushing it away from other clusters. If we consider each image as its own cluster, then we get another paradigm in SSL called instance discrimination or contrastive learning. In contrastive learning, an unlabeled input image is augmented twice to get two different views. These views are then passed through the model to get their corresponding representations. The goal now is to pull these representations closer. But the model can do this trivially by simply producing the same representation regardless of the input. To prevent this collapse of representations, we need another ingredient called contrast. Thus, we take a bunch of random images and forward them through the same model to get their representations. Now, Instead of only pulling the two views of the same image closer, we also push the query away from the random images. This contrast prevents the model from solving the task trivially. Note that the random images are also called as negatives. Instead of forwarding the random images in each iteration, we can use the output of the previous iterations. One technique of doing this is proposed in MoCo. We maintain two models where one of them is a moving average of the other. But there is a problem here. Since we do not know whether the negatives in the memory bank are semantically related to the given image, we end up pushing their representations apart. This is not desirable. One solution to this problem is to use soft probabilities for negatives, which is proposed in the paper ISD, Self-Supervised Learning by Iterative Similarity Distillation. We will be presenting this paper in poster session 8 in this conference and we invite you to attend it to learn more. Another solution is to completely remove the negatives. This is called as non-contrastive learning. So this is contrastive learning and this is non-contrastive learning as proposed in BYL. You first remove the negatives and add a predictor layer to prevent the model collapse. That's it. Now you don't have to worry about pushing away from semantically related images. One thing missing from recent non-contrastive approaches is the lack of grouping between different images. We believe that clustering methods work well because they pull similar images closer. But one problem with them is that we need to make assumptions about priors like shape or size of the clusters. These can be unknown for an unlabeled dataset. Thus, inspired by the old school mean shift clustering algorithm, we design a method that can do this grouping without any explicit clustering step. We train the model to simply move the representation of a point towards the center of mass of its neighboring points. As there is no clustering step involved, we don't need to make any assumptions about the shape or size of the clusters. Since we never push away from any points, our method is also not contrastive. In fact, it is a generalization of BYL. And as we will see, it is a simple and easy to implement method. So let's take a look. We start off with the setup of BYL. An input unlabeled image is augmented twice. One augmentation is passed through the target model and the other is passed through the query model. Next, since we already have the moving average target encoder, we can simply add its output to a queue to maintain a memory bank. This operation is similar to MoCo, but the memory bank is not used for contrast. Instead, we use it to sample nearest neighbors. But before we sample the nearest neighbors, we first add the target representation to the memory bank. The reason for this step will soon become evident. 
Next, we find k nearest neighbors of the target from the memory bank. Let's consider k to be 3 in this case. Note that the target embedding is already present in the memory bank. Thus, the first nearest neighbor will always be the target itself. Finally, the loss simply minimizes the sum of the cosine distances between the query and the nearest neighbors. Intuitively, in addition to pulling the query closer to the target, it is also pulled closer to the k nearest neighbors. Note that when k equal to 1, the only nearest neighbor is the target embedding, which means that the query will only be pulled closer to the target. Thus, with k equal to 1, our method becomes identical to b y l, where no grouping between different images is performed. Let's now try to visualize the behavior of our method as the training progresses. The first column is the target view, which is used to find the nearest neighbors. The rest of the columns are the nearest neighbors sorted by their distance to the target. Here we see the result of epoch 0, which means the model is randomly initialized. We can see that although the NNs are not semantically related to the query, they are still closer to it in terms of low level features. For example, most images have similar color as a target image. At the end of the first epoch, the NNs are more semantically related. At the end of just the 10th epoch, the model has learned to group the broad category of dogs together. Now, the NN start getting more refined and closer to the target in terms of fine grained category, shape, pose and color. At the end of the training, we can see that NNs have similar pose and color as the query image. We can also see this grouping behavior in this TSNE plot. We visualize the representations of images from 10 randomly sampled categories at different epochs during the training. Each color represents a category. As the training progresses, the representations become more semantically grouped. Let us now take a look at the results of our method on ImageNet dataset. We use ResNet50 model in all our experiments. For a fair comparison, we keep the batch size, epochs, etc. same between ours and other SOTA methods. Given similar computational budget, we find that our method performs better. In the current results so far, the standard approach has been to use the same set of augmentations to generate both the views. And the augmentation used is strong. We call this default augmentation strong since it involves aggressive operations like color jitter, grayscale and blurring. When these strong augmentations are applied to the target view, the NNs can be semantically different. Thus, we use a weaker augmentation for the target view. This can help in finding more semantically relevant neighbors. The weak augmentation involves only cropping and horizontal flipping. This technique of weak and strong augmentation is inspired from the paper Fix Match, which used it for generating pseudo labels in semi supervised learning. Weak strong, or simply W slash S, refers to using weak augmentation for the target view and the default strong augmentation for the query view. The figure on the left compares the quality of the retrieved NNs. The quality is measured by a metric called as purity, which is the percentage of NNs that belong to the same category as the target image. We can clearly see that the NNs retrieved in the weak strong setting are much purer as a result of the weakly augmented target. We can also see that the resulting weak strong model is much better than the strong strong version. Getting back to the results, we see that weak strong improves our method compared to other SOTA methods. Until now, we saw the results of our method with the memory bank size equal to 1 million. Here, we explore the effect of memory bank size on accuracy. We can clearly see that the accuracy starts to plateau after 128k. Also note that increasing the memory bank size from 256 to 128k results in a dramatic improvement in performance. This is because the larger search space results in more semantically related NNs. Further, we can also ask how compute heavy is the task of finding NNs. The table on the right shows the compute cost and the performance of two memory bank sizes, 1 million and 128k. For 128k, we find that KNN cost is very small as compared to the entire training cost. Also, there is no significant difference between the performance of both memory bank sizes. 
Note that the cost of finding NNs is dominated by calculating the cosine distances between the target and the memory bank. The same computation is needed in any method that uses memory bank, like MoCo. Here we see that our method with 128k still outperforms other SOTA methods. For a fair comparison, we only compared against methods that use similar compute budget. Here we show the comparison with other methods without this constraint. Since our method does grouping of different images, we hypothesize that it is less reliant on strong augmentations. To test this hypothesis, we only do weak augmentation for both the target and the query. We find that despite using significantly reduced computational budget, our method outperforms other SOTA methods by a large margin. This shows that our method can be applied without much augmentation engineering. This can be beneficial in domains like medical images, where augmenting images is not obvious. Finally, let us take a look at the transfer learning results. Note that we freeze the backbone and train only the single linear layer for each dataset. The mean over all datasets is reported in the last column. Again, given similar computation budgets, our models outperform other SOTA methods. Note that the default memory bank size is 1 million, and reducing that to 128k in fact results in the best performing model. In conclusion, our method is inspired by mean shift and does not have an explicit clustering step. It moves the representation of an image towards the center of mass of its neighbors. It is non-contrastive. In fact, it is a generalization of BOL. It is simple, easy to implement, and works great even with weaker augmentations. Thanks a lot for your time. Goodbye.